Direct from Albany, New York, it's time for the New Media Zone. With your host, Ed and Dave. And now your host, Ed and Dave. Hello. Hello and welcome to the New Media Zone, and Dave here, and Dave with you, doing a special Class of 1980 show, because there's no films in the theaters. End of our graduation, though, you have the yearbooks. Do you have your yellow Class of 80 shirt, Dave? No. <laughs> you don't have this? No. All the names are, I don't know why I have it, actually. Uh, I, I don't know either. Okay. You know, just the basic story. They were, they were twins. Yes. And this was apparently Colony Central's answer to, uh, who do you like better, Ginger oh. or Marianne? <laughs> <laughs> because some people like Sue uh -huh. and some people like Diane. Now, mm -hmm. they were twins. Yes. They weren't exactly alike. Right. You could tell the difference. We've told, we've mentioned everybody's names throughout the years, but within the past couple of years, there have been incidences. Uh-oh that have come to light and deaths which make it more sensitive some right. of our stories so what we've decided to do is tell the stories there are one or two things i will not mention any name okay it's too too uh, sensitive okay but our editor on this show because i have too many other shows to edit bob Bouchot, i trust him <laughs> he's going to take the names out where appropriate okay okay up your crayons and whatever. Okay. I rem do you remember being told you had to go get a jock? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It was a very odd thing. It was a jock you were supposed to wear in this gym class you were supposed to take. Yep. Oh my God. Hock up the loogie on the high uh, seat. Yep. <laughs> And he would let it drip, drip down, down and to the end. And right before we got to school, when it was full chunk, <laughs> he would take that and throw it up in front. <laughs> Poor victim. I always sat behind, Dave. Damn smart. We all got together. I really didn't know you until that uh, library class mm -hmm. or whatever we were doing in there, study hall. Right. And Jim Moore and Dave Stotts mm -hmm. and a few others uh, became friends there at, right at the very end. And I'm sticking to this thing here. These, uh, by the way, are from the 20th reunion we had. Oh, is it? I grabbed a couple of these okay. on the way out. So yeah, it was towards the end. And a, a lot, as we see our decorations here, a lot of fond memories of all the fine TV shows. But when I start to think back of this Sand Creek, this was, yeah, did you have the Farrah Fawcett poster oh, up? Sure there? did. You did? Oh, yes. I think everybody had that up. You had to. If you were any type of a male, <laughs> and, you had to have that. And a lot of people spent many hours in front of the Farrah poster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to remember, kids, who have the internet today. And, that, was, that was our porn. <laughs> and could get, can get hardcore pornography free. With a click of the button. No, you don't even have to say you're 18 or anything. Right. But this is about all we had in the 70s. <laughs> it was very cold in the studio, and it provided kids with a little sexuality there. Oh, man. That's yeah, all we had, Dave. You might even like that better than today's porn. <laughs> oh, right. Like that. It was kind of wholesome. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. with, with the nice smile and all the hair. <laughs> and the uh, head hair, not yeah. the Michael. <laughs> oh boy! I still have a couple more things from seventh grade. There. You better hurry up. This is supposed to be a one-hour show. This is going to be a five-part episode. I think, I think, I think. Now, this story I've never told before. Uh, okay. This is one I've never told. It. It's um, slightly embarrassing, but I'm going to tell it. Oh. On this show. You're putting yourself out there. But I'm sitting in seventh grade, again minding my own business. And Sherry, who I, I don't remember anything except this one incident. I don't remember what happened before. I don't remember what happened after. 
Because like when these stories happen, you oh, I got to go in that class the next day. <laughs> but I'm sitting there minding my own business, and if it had been one other girl, just one maybe, but two, I think it was three other girls and Sherry Rudy. Oh, no. I don't remember talking to Sherry Rudy before this. All of a sudden, the girls are asking, hey, do you want to go out with Sherry? Oh. Hey. <laughs> now I'm, sit I'm embarrassed. I'm a shy kid in a new school, and I'm embarrassed. Today, I would have said yes in a minute and out to the parking lot or something. But this is a shy kid, and I'm embarrassed. I said, oh, no, that's okay, and whatever. And they harassed me the entire class before and after. And I'm sitting there during the class, like, oh, my God, let me get out of this room. And I don't know why. It was, she was a good-looking girl then and probably still now. But it was so embarrassed to be uh, ganged up on. No. Oh. Now, what would you have done in this situation, Dave? Uh, a girl is a young... I don't think I talked to her. I would have twice cried like a five-year-old and <laughs> ran out of there. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't just me, right? It was an odd situation. To be I in. didn't like to be the center of attention. No, never wanted any. I just wanted to slink into class unnoticed and slink out and pray to God the teacher never called on me. Right. I didn't. That was I wanted to thing. go through the whole year, and when I and the last day, I wanted everyone to go. Oh, you were in the class. <laughs> That's how I wanted to get through that. Ugh. But, yeah, I wish someone did that to me with uh, Diane Rizman. Yeah. I would have said, yeah. Yeah, I would have said yes now. In and the, I would still say yes now. In the hall, I was being ganged up on. Oh. I'm sorry, uh, Sherry, but I would have said yes. Oh, your life could have turned out oh, so it, different. It would have been so different. What would we have done in seventh grade? <laughs> I don't know. Hold hands and go to the movies? I don't know. I don't know you know who I went to the movie with? Keith uh, Rosenberg or something, I can't find in the yearbook, <laughs> some guy uh, who apparently did not graduate all the way through. Hey, you want to go see Young Frankenstein? I'm trying to find out who it was, and it, I can't find him now. But uh, Sherry would have went. I would have went if I wasn't ganged up on. Don't gang up on poor kids. <laughs> Ask them in the hall somewhere. <laughs> we didn't have... We didn't have Price Chopper on our side back then. <laughs> no. Like they do now with the anti-bullying campaign. Yeah, I wonder. They, there's all kinds of bullying stuff today. But I, I know kids are still getting uh, hit oh, out I'm there. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. we got to get uh, out of high school at some point. <laughs> One final thing. The seventh grade has been a uh, half hour. I don't know how we're going to uh, do I think when we, as we get along, it was this Sand Creek was so bad. <laughs> But the one good thing about Sand Creek is I remember it was John Eglaw. Do you remember him? He had the Jaws book oh. on his desk. Wow. And so I saw that, and I, uh, long before we knew the movie was coming, I knew there was something out there called Jaws because uh, he had the book on his desk. He was reading it. Okay, let's get the hell out of oh. the <laughs> seventh grade, Dave. Let's, Eighth grade. Let's move on to the... Rouge d'Or. <laughs> Eighth grade. Uh, the fun continued. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, I don't have as much here. Good. we got to get to high school. Eighth right. grade is still middle school. Let's take a look at a few things uh -oh. that came out in 1975. All right. The Pet Rock. Yes. Did you have that? I did not. I... Some idiot made millions of dollars by putting a rock in a box. Mm-hmm. A rock, Ed. Right. That you can pick up off the ground. Right. That was his idea, and it caught on, and he made a ton of dough. Um, unreal. I think I had Pet Rock, but it wasn't the official Pet Rock. It was like the Kmart version. <laughs> it was a little smaller. And it might have been a pebble of some sort. Pet pebble, yep. Now, something was introduced in 75. It was Bubble Yum. Do you remember the big Bubble Yum yes, craze? Yes. You better not have a package of bubble yum. <laughs> uh, bubble yum, oh. it's still being made. This okay. is what I have. Yes. I remember being more of a block, a big square. Yeah, it was. we have the picture up here. It was a little square than the, the current version. And the current version has some kind of duck mascot for some reason. But would you like to relive? Oh, God. Oh, He's, that's yeah. That's it. The, still looks like a block yeah, inside. Yeah, it's the same. No, okay, so the packaging is just different now. And the oh, the smell. I remember this was the first soft bubble gum. It was a big deal. 
Oh, yes. This... And it was tough to get a hold of. Oh, God. <laughs> that sm it smells it's, exactly it's, like eighth grade. It does. <laughs> Armpit and ass. <laughs> and one of the things be that remind me of that disgusting Sand Creek building is when people were done with their bubble yum, <laughs> they would put it underneath the desk and you would uh, run into that on occasion. But bubble yum, there was another gum that was popular that year. Do you remember the other gum? Not the love that squirt gum. What do you About get when you bite into one? Love that squirt. Hey, what do you love about fresh and of gum? Love that squirt. What do you love when you bite into one? Love that squirt. Freshen up Freshen's breath with a tingly liquid center. One bite squirts refreshment all over your breath. Freshen your breath with Freshen up. The gum nickel squirt. Love that squirt. <laughs> A lot of squirting going on in there. Mm. Freshen up went out of business two years ago. Oh, did it? I don't remember seeing it around a lot, though. Hmm. I'm going to take my gum out and not stick it to the bottom of the desk. I'm just waiting. I want to blow a bubble. Okay. That uh, I haven't done since I was 16. Let's see if we have any more items that came out. Oh, one more, I think, that came out in 75. Oh, I don't know that. You don't remember the Bic Banana? Nope. Do you remember the Bic Banana Ink Crayons? Nope. You don't remember. Let's see if this brings back a memory. Look what I have here, Dave. Nope. It's a Bic Banana. I don't think it smelled like banana. It just kind of looked like one, sort of. And a green top. I don't think the gum stuck in your uh, on your face, so you're lucky because you got a lot of hair there. Next time we uh, do this show, there probably will be none left. They'll all be gone. <laughs> hmm. I don't remember the big banana. Hmm. Okay, uh, seventy-five. That's when cable came through the the neighborhoods. Oh. Did you get cable right away? Not right away. Hmm. But I do remember all the different channel select the, the things that you would use, the big buttons that you would push, or the thing that you would slide, and one that had two levels to it, the up and the down. Oh, it was, the, I mean, it was this big, almost like a typewriter type of thing that you would use to change your channels. And the wire would run to oh. the TV. There was mm -hmm. no remote. Right. And the buttons were first, and then later on came along the wee, the little slide thing. Yep. Yep. Now, did you have to go to confirmation class? Mm-hmm. Do you remember? It was eighth grade, right? I don't remember. You don't remember? No. Well, it was eighth grade for me. And uh, in seventh grade, I, I went to Young Frankenstein with Keith uh, Rosenberg or whoever it was I went with. And I, you know, enjoyed the Mel Brooks. Uh -huh. And I probably saw Blazing Saddles on HBO, which we got early, yes. right when that came out. Yep. So in eighth grade, when Things Were Rotten. Oh, great show. Was coming on. It was a spoof of Robin Hood. And unfortunately, it was on the same night that when uh, my confirmation class Ooh. was over at uh, St. Clair's. So, un well, two unfortunate things. It was the same night, and it didn't last long. So I never saw right. When Things Were Rotten until it came out on DVD. Oh, yeah, the gym classes, besides the showers. I don't know what we were doing in there, but they seemed to enjoy playing dodgeball <laughs> a lot <laughs> in these gym classes. Do you remember any horror stories? It was uh, They would just try and throw it as hard as they could at you. Yeah, it, was, it could kill a man. Playing this uh, dodgeball. Yeah. And I remember I got hit a lot of times, but Charles Beach oh. was uh, a runner. I don't mm. know if he was any other sports, but by God, they couldn't get him out. <laughs> he was always the last one. And he, would, he was fast, I guess. He would zoom yep. and the balls would come flying and he was always the last one. So all these big muscle bounce. Oh, I was going to mention the beginning of the show. There's no mention of the football 
or basketball teams. <laughs> There'll be none of that on the show. We, did you go to a football or basketball game uh, during our time? In high school, I did, yes. You did? I went to the basketball, a couple of basketball couple. games. couple. That's more than I did. Yeah, not, not a lot, but it seemed like some of the girls like to go to the basketball oh, games. okay. Maybe it was a social thing. But well, I had It didn't work for me, but I tried. <laughs> I had enough of the social thing during the week. I wasn't going to go to any more. I think school. the uh, the big draw for most of the kids was uh, the prolific uh, scorer our school had. I believe his name was Jim. And please, people, no, don't write in. I can't. There's, I can't do anything about his last name. Jim Corona. Oh, oh, gee. It's I, you know. I thought you were going to say another name no. that was sort of suggestive when we were looking through. Well, no, but, you know, in, in, yeah. in these uncertain times, right. which, by the way, I'm getting sick of hearing about, um, yes, Corona. So mm. his name, I believe it was Jim Corona. Could, well, he could play. Yeah. Okay. Oh, one more thing about this, and this was, uh, remember those damn study halls? Yes. In uh, Sand Creek? And it had the, the table that would slide out. It was a bad black table. It was a sort of this big. It would come to the side. You would lift it out. No. I don't remember the table. No. Well, I don't think we were assigned seats in there. You just kind of went. It was study hall. So I'm sitting there minding my own business, as always, trying to get through the day. And these a-holes. Oh. Or one a-hole. Oh. Be sitting behind you. Tapping on your shoulder, and you turn around. And this face <laughs> is emblazoned in my memory behind me, and his stoolie or his toady. I knew it wasn't the guy next to him that was doing this. <laughs> it was this idiot, this yutz behind me. And okay, it's funny. Two or three times I turn around. All right, we don't know. We do. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> It's not funny. It's annoying. You know, even in eighth grade, we had outgrown this type of thing. <laughs> and the face is emblazoned in my mind. So, um, You'd pick him out of a lineup, would you? Not today. Okay. <laughs> I can't pick him out anywhere. This is another one of those sensitive subjects. I can't mention the name. So another time I'm sitting there. And there's something going on behind me again. I think there was one or two of the, the tap things. And then there was a, a, what, a wipe or something. And I don't know what was going It was the same idiot in the face that's emblazoned in my mind. So I, I'm just, I don't want to trouble. I want to sit there. I, I don't know what would happen if I actually got up and do anything. I don't think I would have done anything. I did do something in 11th grade, and it's coming up. Ooh, better hurry up. <laughs> but I... Yeah, I go home, and I take off the shirt, and there's blood on it. Oh. There's <laughs> blood been wiped on my shirt. Now, the, the tapping was annoying enough, but this is a good shirt my mother went out and paid for. And that blood stains. It was stained, and who knows what it was filled with from Ugh. this guy. Ugh. Oh, and this, this guy, there was something wrong, <laughs> because in eighth grade in the science class, the guy was running amok. There was a, a dresser thing, a cabinet in the back, he went climbing up the cabinet, and the thing <laughs> toppled over. over on top of him. And it was a science class. I don't know why there was pain in there, but the kid was covered <laughs> with pain. It just uh, one of these bad kids. It wasn't Maywood. It was one of these other ones we read through where all these bad kids uh, came mm -hmm. from. But I still have this memory. you <laughs> you got to be careful, <laughs> you kids out there, what you're doing to people in school because they, there are some people that will not uh, forget. And the TV show and the... <laughs> Relate the story 40 years later. Oh boy. So. Are we getting to high school yet for our high school show? <laughs> hey, it's time to, to get the hell out of that uh, Sand Creek day. Yeah. And we're going to go into Lysha Kill. I have fond memories of Lysha Kill. I have no memories of Lysha Kill. You don't have any memories? No, none. I walked there. I had to go on the bus on Sand Creek. Did you have the bus the whole time for high school? And uh, Yes. Yeah, I got a reprieve for ninth grade. I can oh, that's walk. right. You are you were up by Lysha Kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. Mm, there's so little here that I'm. Oh, I remember uh, coming on HBO was George Carlin. 
special. Oh, yes. And I think I would start to come out of my shell here because I would tell some of the stories George Carlin told at the lunch table, and the kids seemed to enjoy it. I even threw in the bad language <laughs> right, right on the ninth, ninth grade table there. Uh, oh, another, I, w I wish this would happen in high school, but I was harassed again. Oh, I was no. sexually harassed, Whoa. Dave, in ninth grade. By a female? <laughs> by, by a female. Well, I couldn't, that could be good. Natalie Fox. What, a name like that, you can't go wrong. <laughs> no. And uh, she, I'm walking through the halls, and she comes up behind me and grabs my behind it. Ooh. Right in the hall. Nice. <laughs> and, of course, I just oh, moved on, <laughs> embarrassed again. Uh, I, that was all she did. She didn't ask for any dating or anything. It just happened to... She was probably just... It was probably some kind of a prank she was just doing to uh, random passers-by. Yeah, maybe it looked good that that's day. It, that's an innocent know. little joke. Yeah, it's okay, I, I don't guess. have a problem with that. You can't do that if the, uh, you're a male today grabbing no. a female's behind. No. No. Well, I, don't, but, I, still, I don't think you could do it anyway. No. I think if a guy had done, a guy had done that, oh, he would have been in trouble, right? Yes. Yeah, Even probably. then. But back then, but back in those days, if a girl did it to a guy, the guy doesn't get all go crazy about it because then they make fun of him. Yeah, you know, you just you accept it and go, "Ooh, yeah, good for me." <laughs> I kind of look like John Landis. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't remember. We were in the course of the seventies, and it was the braless era. Yes, it was. I don't remember a lot of uh, sexy outfits or bralessness. I remember some tube tops. Yeah, I do remember the tube tops. I do remember some tube tops being untubed. <laughs> I thought I had heard that story. Did you see that I going on? I saw that happen. You did? Yes. Do you remember who the... Uh, untubed, who the victim was? Yeah, or the yes, doer. Yes, I know who the victim was. Now, do you... you I will not mention the victim's name. <laughs> you can say that off camera because we don't want to chance that one with Bob, uh, the editor. I suppose. You suppose. Um, now, this one wasn't pulled off, but I remember sitting in ninth grade trying to do, whichever way I was sitting, which was this way, I think, trying to do my exam. And, of course, in June, they would have the tube tops on. Mm -hmm. And right in my view, trying to do my test, was Barb with a tube top hanging over the desk. And right in my view was the tube top. Mm. And the things they were tubing, they were topping, <laughs> right there. So there was that, and then I remember one time Sandy Pop, I don't know if these were a popular item of the day, but they were jeans that had cross stitching up the leg, and they went all so far up that it looked like there might have been no underwear oh. under there. Wow. And that was right in my view as I'm trying to learn whatever it was that day. Again, that was our porn. <laughs> that was all. We were just enjoying the sights. Yes. But I still enjoy the sights of the uh, older women. There's nothing yes. wrong with uh, enjoying a, a, an aesthetic beauty. Right. But back in those days when you're 13, 14, mm, as, my, as my father would say, maron. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That's Italian for what? My God? <laughs> or or holy? So. Maybe I just cursed. I don't know. Yeah, but I don't remember a lot of wild outfits. Of course, later on in high school, they would have things like the thongs hanging out of the top and all kinds of uh, dippy tops in the 90s with the belly buttons. We didn't have, even though it was the 70s, I don't remember a lot of that going on. No, just my <laughs> <laughs> And the only other thing, you got a comic book over there, Dave, on the ground. Oh, right Some, here. Right there. I, I noticed a comic book theme running through my high school and days. Mm -hmm. This was something, uh, well, let's just talk about this. We'll do okay. that later. But the, look what's on in the front cover. I think this was the first time I knew inside the cover. You want the inside or you want the front cover? The inside. This was the first time I knew a oh. movie was going to be released way ahead of time because this ad showed up in the comics way ahead of King Kong, which we enjoy, Dave. We enjoy, even though it was, was it a bomb? or just It was crap. A, it was a crappy movie, crap. but entertaining, right? Um, yeah, in its own way. Yeah, I mean, you know how I am with giant monkey movies. Right, you like the monkeys. I don't know why. 
maybe because I enjoyed the music. But there was hype uh, yes. all months before that, and we were all excited to see King Kong, and, you know, there wasn't a lot of dinosaurs, and uh, there was a man in a suit, and then, of course, the mechanical Kong for all of three seconds. The only thing that makes the mecha mechanical Kong hilarious is, it, and maybe it's just my recollection of this story, is an interview with, I believe, De Laurentiis, Dino De Laurentiis, talking about how they are building this life-size giant Kong for the film. And to my mind, I interpreted that as this is going to be some incredible effect. They're going to have this actual giant thing roaming around, doing this massive damage, and it's just going to be great action, when it really didn't move. And it was used for, yeah, about three seconds. Yeah. You know, and I, I always have done the impression of it, but I don't, I, no, I'm not going to waste my, my effort doing my incredibly perfect impression. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you're moving, you're giving it too much credit there. <laughs> it was holding two pieces of the cage, right. and I think the fingers sort of let it drop. <laughs> it was shown in the cage for a few seconds and then they cut to it and they had Rick Baker in the monkey suit holding on to it and then they cut a little further back in this giant mechanical thing <laughs> let the pieces go <laughs> for a million dollars they spent on I can say that it is similar to Jaws in the vein that uh, apparently, neither Bruce nor Kong worked properly, but at least Jaws was a great film, and they managed to get Bruce to do to work to a certain degree. But it heightened the suspense of the film Jaws by not using it as frequently as they wanted to. Whereas in King Kong, it was just this crappy thing that looked not even <laughs> like the Kong that the that the guy the makeup. I mean the. The makeup that the guy wore was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. But it was just... Yeah. Yeah, that was bad. Just say we'll be picking it up in the next show. <laughs> the New Media Zone has been a Cable 2000 production. Was the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, gonna, he was. I wasn't going to mention the name. Oh.